Crypto briefing. Bitcoin is currently sitting at $33,402, down 17.1%. Ethereum, down 21%. XRP, surprisingly, up 24%. Likely because of the Litecoin airdrop. The Flare XRP airdrop. Bitcoin Cash on the week, up 13, down 22 on that 24-hour mark. Litecoin surprisingly has seen a large sell-off, down 26% in the last 24 hours, 17 on the week. Cardano looking good on the week at 285 down 18% the last 24 hours. And the other coins are also down. Everything follows Bitcoin. So you will notice that any cryptocurrency, no matter how obscure, has likely fallen in the last 24 hours. As a 1% gain in the last seven days. NYDIG acquires digital assets data as crypto M and A looks poised to pick up. Bitcoin custody and trading service provider NYDIG announced Monday that it has acquired crypto data firm digital assets data ahead of a bigger push to expand its platform. NYDIG is not as well known as some more retail uh, facing exchanges like Coinbase or Kraken, but the firm counts more than 4 billion in assets under management and operates a business that spans prime brokerage, corporate treasury, and custody services. As per its website, you can follow the link. They have the link. The blockcrypto.com. Thank you for the data. DYDIG made headlines in December when insurance giant Mass Mutual said that it had invested $5 million in the company and utilized NYDIG services to acquire 100 million worth of Bitcoin for its general insurance account. Digital assets data has raised more than 9 million from venture investors, including Morgan Creek, Digital, Digital Currency Group, and North Iceland. In 2020, the firm co-founder and chief operating officer, Kurt First major departed the firm, according to his LinkedIn. As for the acquisition deal, DYDIG says it will help the firm expand its data capabilities. According to a press release, they will know Kung Fu. While the firm declined to share any financial details of the transaction, the firm told the block that digital assets data's platform will broaden DYDIG's digital asset data capabilities to provide even better insights to the firm and its clients because the spoon is not really there. As DYDIG client base and the digital asset market rapidly expand, the addition of new high quality data sources and analytical capabilities serves the enhanced DYDIG's existing research, trading, and advisory capabilities, the firm said in a statement shared with the block. Digital Assets Data Twin co founders Mike and Ryan Alfred will be joined the DYDIG team as head of M&A and head of product, respectively. As head of M&A, Alfred will focus 
on identifying professional pardon potential acquisitions targets as dydig expects to significantly increase the volume of strategic acquisitions in 2021 the firm says alfred is looking out for them this deal is among the first of 2021 a year in which many markets pundits expect to see a flurry of m and a activity as noted by the blocks researchers john d'antoni data and analytics is one of sector of the crypto market that is ripe for m and a activity with banks traditional financial institutions fintech entering the space with new crypto offerings more consolidations among current market participants should be expected as they compete to be the premier source for information and data services that tony wrote so they are competing with Chainlink, very established Oracle. Chinese state-owned bank tests digital yuan ATMs in Shenzhen. This is brought to you by the block. One of the four largest state-owned banks in China has been testing digital yuan on its ATM in Shenzhen. According to local news reports on Sunday, the Agricultural Bank of China has rolled out ATMs in selected Shenzhen branches that allow customers to convert their bank savings or cash into digital yuan on their smartphones and vice versa. That is looking good one more stable coin but this one is created by a government looking good solana trading volume soars as DeFi seeks ethereum alternatives for those that do not know transactions on ethereum are very expensive especially when you execute a contract the DeFi sector is booming again and the need for fast scalable ethereum alternatives has sent Solana trading volumes to record highs. 2021 got off to a quick start and the current, current crypto bull market has seen assets like Bitcoin and Ethereum shoot to new all-time highs on almost daily basis. While new price highs are positives for investors, they do present a range of challenges relating to fees transaction speeds and the centralization of what is meant to be a decentralized ecosystem since mid 2020 institutional investors have been steadily flooding into cryptocurrency and this is exacerbating the issue of scalability high transaction cost and length the confirmation times on the Bitcoin and Ethereum blockchain. Like for example, if you go to a Bitcoin ATM, you better have some Ethereum unless you wanna wait maybe 30 minutes, two hours for a Bitcoin confirmation. If you wanna execute a smart contract on Ethereum without optimistic rollup, you better have $100 of Ethereum ready. If two, is steadily rolling out but it could still be some time before users will benefit from its host of new features this leaves the door open for other viable candidates to fill the void and a handful of layer two projects are gaining traction in the decentralized finance space that is good solana is gaining traction look at that wow that that looks like it is going places uh never buy when it's up that high always buy when it crashes don't forget that this next article is brought to you by the daily huddle 
Institutional rocket fuel could soon boost Ethereum, says microinvestor Dan Taipiro. Prominent global macro investor Dan Tapiro says Ethereum is poised to surge as a wave of institutional investors set their sights on the second largest crypto asset by market cap. On an episode of The Breakdown with Natil Withimer, Tapio says that the amount of stimulus pumped into the money supply this year has transformed the financial landscape. I quote, I think investors need to really think in a different framework. I think the framework is still developing, but almost anything that you use to think, I think, that you have to think as now changed. Bottom line, if you add up all of the fiscal and monetary stimulus that was done and try to put a value on it this year, you're looking at an amount of over 30 trillion of stimulus was put into the world economy. That's one and a half the size of the US economy injected into the world. So I don't think we even understand yet what the ramifications are. Tapio says that as the economic landscape continues to shift, he says Ethereum is likely to receive more attention from institutional investors. It is possible that some of these institutions start to look at Ethereum. And you have not heard anything about that as an allocation as well. I don't want to say it's a prediction, but if you ask me, like, what could be a surprising thing that could happen that people aren't thinking about, that would be something that I would be surprising. Yeah, it would be surprising. The DTAP Capital founder notes that Northern Trust plans to custody crypto assets could be a big sign institutional investors are starting to eye Ethereum. That is great. Also, you might want to take into consideration um, the gas fees, they're pretty high. So you have to constantly be buying Ethereum if you if you want to transact and um, execute some of these smart contracts. Yearn Finance founder hints at collaboration with Top DeFi Protocol Curve. Over the past few months, Yearn Finance has, has been on a collaboration spree. This is brought to you by Crypto Slate. Late last year, project founder Andre Kronge announced that it would be absorbing Pickle Finance. They absorbed it because Pickle got its pickle in a pickle when it got hacked. A DeFi yield aggregator. This was followed by a series of other announcements in which Kronge revealed that Yearn Finance would be absorbing the resources of other protocols to realize key synergies this is basically like a blockchain conglomerate built, being built right in front of our eyes by now yearn dot finance has pickle finance cream finance acropolis sushi swap and cover protocol under its expanding wings Kronge is not done yet, though. On Saturday, the developer revealed that his team is currently working with Curve team on an announcement project, Wi-Fi X Curve. On Sunday, Curve turned one year old. Yearn launched as iEarn is now also around one year old. Both projects launched in early 2020, as did Ave, formerly known as Lend. Uh, for those that uh, remember Lend, 
to kick off the explosion in the DeFi space that took place last year. Thus far, Yearn's involvement with Curve could arguably be seen as parasitic. Right now, users deposit stablecoins into Yearn's vault system, which is then used to systematically yield farm and dump Curve native token. It is sometimes argued, in fact, that Yearn vaults are one reason why Curve has performed so per poorly since its launch in Q3 2020. Uh, I can attest to this. I mean, if you bought um, Curve back in Q3 of 2020, let's say you put a $5,000. Right now you have 800 bucks in Curve and it's dropping in value. Why? Because the Curve protocol devs have not mitigated the fact that your finance is dumping curve hard your finance isn't working with curve it's crushing curve it is working against curve you know curve needs to realize that your finance is not good for them your finance is only looking out for Yearn Finance investors. I mean, that's why Yearn Finance is sitting at past $20,000 and Curve is sitting at less than a dollar. I mean, if it was a stock on any reputable exchange anywhere on the planet, it would have been delisted by now. But uh, the problem with Curve is that those that hold most of the power I mean, are in line with your finance. I mean, even this guy, the creator of your finance right here, he has a large stake of curve. He controls a large stake of curve. He has a lot of voting power on curve. I mean, even if you if you buy ten thousand dollars, a hundred thousand, five hundred thousand dollars of curve, this guy can outvote you. I mean, this gentleman is just destroying Curve. Curve needs to build something in order to just block your finance from farming Curve and constantly dumping on the market. I mean, look, it's sitting at 68 cents. That is horrible. Curve is worth far more than that. Curve, what it does is stabilizes stable coins. So let's say you have synthetic usd it takes a basket of stable coins puts them together they trade against each other and they stabilize susd it is a good protocol it is worth far more than what it is now bitcoin whales are profiting as we can sell bitcoin through 40k bull run High or low, Bitcoin is still being shaken out of small investors and flowing to millionaire wallets. The data confirms this week. Bitcoin is changing hands faster after it's dropped to 32,000 and only millionaires are winning data shows. Statistics governing wallet balances from Last note on January 11th revealed that the main investors buying the dip are those with a balance in excess of 1,000 Bitcoin, which if you, if, if you value it right now would be a 36 million. Millionaire wallets keep growing. Compiled by Elias Simos, protocol specialist at blockchain infrastructure provider bison trails the numbers suggest that the wealthy have been profiting from bitcoin being sold by smaller investors throughout december and january addresses with more than 1k btc continue growing at the expense of all others even as this most recent uh, downturn is taking effect Simo summarized 
while you were selling, whales were gobbling up your Bitcoin. While the number of wallets with smaller balances decreased as BTC USD climbed from 19,000 on December 1st to recent highs of 42,000, the 1,000 plus Bitcoin group became an outlier growing in presence. The net effect thus uh, weak hands selling to strong hands and the richer the entity, the stronger the hands. Don't be part of the hashtag BTC transfer to billionaires, corporations, and hedge funds. At least not yet. Entrepreneur Alistair Milne warned Twitter followers while responding to Simos's findings. Guggenheim hints it will sell BT. While institutional buy-ins have become the standard narrative of Bitcoin over the past few months, a rogue weak hand signal from one of them caught analytics' attention this week. As Cointelegraph reported, Guggenheim Partners which announced a sizable fund allocation to Bitcoin in late November, is allegedly planning to sell some of its holdings already. The trigger came from CIO Scott Minard, who on Monday said that Bitcoin's uh, weakened drop provides the impetus to rethink its position. I quote, Bitcoin's uh, parabolic rise is unsustainable in the near term. Vulnerable to a setback, he wrote. The, tar the target technical upside of 35000 has been exceeded. Time to take some money off the table. His suggestion appeared to confuse market participants with respect responses querying about rationale behind his decision coming just weeks after Guggenheim's initial entry. CIO of huge firm day trading BTC. It's a five to ten year hold minimum micro investor Dan Tapiro argued. Institutional uptake comes amid a more fundamental supply and demand squeeze for Bitcoin, with large buyers already outpacing what miners can produce each month. That is something. Remember, don't let them gobble up your Bitcoin. Put aside some money you don't care about and set it and forget it. Reuters analysis, cancel your weekend. Bitcoin doesn't rest and neither can you. On the first sluggish Saturday of 2021, January 2nd, many people were still nursing New Year hangovers, but there was no breather for Bitcoin, which powered past 30,000 for the first time. It's a 10% single day jump was one of several weekend and public holiday prices surges that helped the cryptocurrency soar by two-thirds from the start of December and early January. Uh, the likelihood is uh, due to the events in a country I will not mention, in a language that I am currently speaking. Thank you for tuning in. Don't forget to like, subscribe. I'll be bringing to you more uh, content and I will refine. You take care now.